Don't you think it's a little loud out there? Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping that it's going to be a great week and that time for us to get some uh, refreshment and some relaxation. This is for many, for many, many of our Chinese brothers and sisters. The next four days are the only four days a year that they actually get for holiday. So I guess we have nothing really to complain about now, do we? I think we're very grateful for them. So this morning, what I'd like to do is this. Uh, I, I want to paint a picture forward as to where uh, we should be moving as a church. I say that because <clears throat> this past week, I was um, filling in all the details and the data from, from 2011 and made a few graphs and uh, just to give me an idea of how things are progressing. Because here's what I find out is uh, we get perceptions and have ideas and get these feelings, but the facts don't lie. Yeah. A case in point, I am uh, my major goal this year is to lose about 10 kilos. Uh, here's what I should have said. I am on my way to losing 10 kilos, but I said my major goal, in other words, sometime this year I have this goal and I'm going to lose that. Uh, and, and the thing is this. <coughs> Facts don't lie. I, I don't feel like I wait. But when I got on the scales two days ago, I was astounded at how serious this problem is. And so, um, I, I, I'm down to business now. I say that to say this. We get feelings and perceptions and how we think things are, but facts don't lie. And the scales definitely don't lie. So, um, having gone through the, this past year, there's a couple of things that really caught my attention. One of those would be that uh, we have had steady growth. In fact, is I have uh, the records going back to 2004, and on this day, on this let's see, this is the fourth Sunday of 2004, uh, the attendance was about 40. In fact, is it was Cliff Yenlenki, Cliff. Uh, you don't know him? You know him? Yes. Uh, and, and then also you spoke that week at the youth. There was a youth rally. There was Tim Gillette who was a speaker. So. Well, it must be good. It must be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back So, uh, we've seen steady growth since then. At the beginning of this year, uh, we were averaging about 70 uh, some adults. Now we're averaging, uh, excuse me, take that back. We're averaging 91 adults. At the end of the year, we're averaging 98 adults. Uh, however, where the big increase has been is in the children. We're averaging over uh, 30 more children at the end of this year than at the beginning. So uh, the, the attendance growth has been fairly steady. And, and that's a good thing. All right? That's a good thing. Uh, it's not the best thing, but it's a good thing. What really caught my attention, though, is <coughs> I. We keep records of how many people are first time visitors. How many of you came to this church first time in 2011? First time in 2011. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good. I, in 2011, we had 275 first time visitors. I don't know how many of those were like family who were visiting who were really looking for a church, but you know, visiting. And I don't know how many of those were children, but. So I, I just guesstimated and figured, let's say 240 people were first time visitors, and that's about 20 people a month, or five people a week, thereabouts. And I began thinking about that 240 some people, 20 people a month, where did they go? They didn't stay here, at least not all of them. And you can see by those who raised their hands, there was a small percentage who did, probably less than 10%. So I was, began to think that. Maybe there's some things that we can do then to help and increase that to where, let's say, if God is gracious enough to give us uh, 240 first time visitors, we are able to keep, say, half of them. That's 120 extra. Uh, more. And the idea is not just to get them to come a second time, but to be coming back again. The idea is to get them to become members. So, it, the past week I've just been reflecting on the whole way that we do things as far as what the whole process is to bring people to membership and so forth and how, how to do that. I, I 
say that because um, God has been very good to us. I, 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 how should I say? I was very convicted that having had that many first time visitors, we did very little to keep them here. And, and uh, honestly, I, I, was, I was very convicted about it and, and asked God to forgive me for not having been more diligent with what we did. So, so uh, we've got some things in this first quarter. Is one of our main goals this first quarter is to try and close the back door. But here's the thing with that. This is where I need you to, and we'll, we'll get into to, uh, some scripture in just a minute. So let's say that if we're averaging almost 100 adults now at uh, the end of 2011, and we add, say, another 100 adults, that's 200 adults, there are only 180 chairs in this room. And if every single chair was filled, it would be crowded. And most, most people who are involved with the church world say you are highly unlikely to, to average more than 80% of your receiving capacity. If you average more than 80% of your receiving capacity, uh, you're way above average and something is going on. So that puts us into a situation where Thinking, you know, this year, there's a very good possibility that we will be very uncomfortable. And uh, I know that Christians don't like to be uncomfortable. <laughs> I know that people like to come to churches where they are comfortable, where it's not where it's such a hassle. One of the houses we deal with every Sunday is parking. So I'm beginning to think, well, what are we going to do here? So uh, there's a couple of things that I, I, I want to say. First of all, is this. It could be that 2012 is going to be a test of your commitment. If you're committed to going to a church because it's easy to go there, then maybe this is not the church that's going to be the best for you when you come here. If you're committed to a church because this is where God wants you to be, and you want to be a part of something that God's involved in, then you may be uncomfortable and you may have to make some sacrifices, but you'll have the satisfaction of going, this is where God wants you. So this gets me then to the idea of uh, uh, what's your vision for 2012? And I read enough books and corporate stuff to know that visioning and, vision and uh, having a vision and so forth is, is something that's good for us to have and kind of gives us a sense of direction. <coughs> and so then the question I had is, because I'm a pastor as well, okay, so that's what they do in the corporate world, but what does the Bible say about that? I mean, is that what the Bible says, and, and uh, I, I know as a preacher it's easy for us to take and get things out of the Bible to make it say what we want to, so that if I want to preach a sermon to you on the importance of vision, man, I can make it say that. You can make the Bible, I, if you try hard, you can make the Bible say pretty much anything you want it to say. It's, it's learning how then to step back and let the Bible say to you, or let God say to you what He wants to say. So I began asking the question then, what's this deal about dreams and visions? Because you remember there's a very famous person, a black person in America, who said, I have a dream, 